Hi Will. Um, I thought the easiest way of showing you how to solve this would be to um, film it rather than um, write it out in text. So it's quite a hard problem. Um, well, you know it's a hard problem even trying to do it. Um, we're trying to find the um, maximum voltage that um, these resistors can take before one of them burns. Um, we don't know which one is going to burn. So I guess actually that's probably the first thing to find out, the one that's most likely to burn, and that will be the one that's dissipating the most power. So we're trying to find the resistor that dissipates the most power. Um, so I've said that, let's say that the um, the cells give out a voltage V, and I'm going to um, then use that to kind of work out the share of voltages that these resistors will have. Um, when I've done that, I can use the formula that um, power is equal to potential difference squared divided by resistance um, to work out the 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 amp power. Although actually, I'll, I'll set this power at two, and then we'll we'll actually work out what the voltage is because that's the question, isn't it? I've got a question sign wrong there, but anyway, that's what we're going to do. So, um, I'm going to split these into three kind of series chunks so that I can. Um, uh, then add them together to find the total resistance. I guess the first thing is finding the total resistance. So if I want to find the total resistance, these two, and you can use the formula um, 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 to work it out, but these two will simplify to just 1 ohm. All right, so that's I've got 1 ohm here. Um, I'm just careful, I don't want to write too much on here, but this is equivalent to 1 ohm. Um, this lot is more complicated, so to start with, using the same kind of logic, this is equivalent to 10 ohms, and again, you could work that out using the um, using the, the formula. Um, so these two, then, if this is equivalent to 10 ohms, these two will be equivalent to 20 ohms. I could end up with a lot of writing on this diagram, but hopefully you can read it. Um, and then I've got... 20 ohms in series with 15 ohms and 20 ohms and really I now really am going to use the formula because I, I, ca I can't simplify that one so easily um, without so let's do that down here so we've got 1 over RT equals 1 over 20 plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 20 and that 20 is because I've got this 10 plus um, these two 20s in parallel which gives me 20 ohms and um, that comes out as does it come out as uh, it comes out as ten over sixty, um, which will be um, six. So it's, so the total resistance is six ohms there. Okay, I've missed out some steps, um, but I'm sure you can you can add those in. Um, okay, so we've got this. So we've got this total resistance. Of this whole block is six ohms. So I've got 1 plus 2 plus 6, the total resistance, the, I know that says total resistance, but the big total resistance for the whole circuit um, is, uh, is what, is 3, 9, 9 ohms. Okay, so my, my big resistance is 9 ohms. So that means that um, I can now work out what the um, voltage share would be. So for the the way that the the voltage will share out is that each um ohm in series will get to uh, will get a ninth of the voltage so i just paused a second whilst i thought about what i was going to say but um if all nine ohms in series would use all of the all of the voltage so if i've got my nine ohms in series each ohm of resistance is going to um, have a potential difference of a ninth of the total voltage over it. And so there's two ohms here, and so my voltage here is going to be two ninths of my total voltage. My voltage here, because this is equivalent to one ohm, my voltage over the whole lot is going to be one ninth, and because they're in parallel, the potential difference is going to be the same for here and here. So it's actually one ninth for the top um, resistor, one ninth for the total voltage, and it's one ninth for the bottom of the, of the resistor. Um, I guess you might need to pause this video and think about some of these um, kind of log logic steps that I'm taking. Some of them are 
might be more more jumps um some of them might be steps uh, it depends but without making the video really really long um i yeah i'm not gonna be able to i guess explain absolutely everything it's annoying if we're having a conversation about this we could quite easily but anyway um maybe one day <laughs> we'll be able to um so looking at this then um a bit like i said here the total voltage over this block of resistors is going to be um six ninths because i've got si uh, six ohms as the whole lot so for this 20 ohm resistor that kind of spans the whole block i know that it's going to get six ninths of the total voltage the same with this 15 ohm resistor it's going to get six ninths of the total voltage now here we've got a 10 ohm and effectively another 10 ohm um, so that's going to be six ninths between them because this is 10 and 10 and they're even it's going to split evenly and so this is going to be three ninths of the total voltage and this is going to be um three ninths of the total voltage and this is going to have three ninths of the total voltage Ooh. What a mess. Anyway, so looking at this, then we've we've split up our our voltage over all of the components. I say this is actually this isn't the only way of doing it. This is my way of doing it. There's you could do it in terms of current. I'm doing it in terms of voltage. You could do it in terms of current. There's probably a third way of doing it as well, but those are two most obvious. Um, or you could work backwards from the power. That's what you could do, um, either in current or in. So there's four ways of solving it, but this is the one that I chose. Um, so what are we going to do now? So now we know that we can work out the power dissipated by each of these resistors. So the power dissipated by this resistor um, is going to be a, a ninth V squared divided by two, because we've got this equation here, power is V squared over R. So the power dissipated by this is going to be um, one over 81. Um, no, it's divided by two, isn't it? Um, V divided by two. This is turning into a bit of a mess here. Um, but this is quite small, right? So one over 81 V over two is definitely going to be smaller than what I'm going to get if I do it for this resistor, which is two over 81 V divided by two. So this one, the power will come out um, as, uh, yeah, as I say, two over 81 Sorry, I don't know why I'm talking so slowly. I'm sure this is... Yeah, 2 over 81 V squared. I forgot to square the V up there, sorry. Uh, sorry, I paused it again. I was distracted slightly. So um, I've got this 2 over 81 V squared because um, this I've squared this uh, 2 over 9 to get 4 over 81, and then I've divided it by 2 look, to get 2 over 81 V squared. Um, and I could do this for all of them, but... You can actually look at it and you can see, well, 2 over 8, 81, um, so I've got 2 ninths divided by 2. Here I've got 3 ninths divided by 10. That's probably not going to be larger. I guess I will actually do it just to just to see. Um, so I'll do that one and I've, I've calculated these earlier. So this is um, comes out as 1 over 90 V squared. So... This is going to dissipate less power than this one. So, so far, this one is dissipating the most power and is the most likely to fail. This 20 ohm resistor is not really much point in doing it because I've got 3 over 9 squared and then I'm going to divide it by 20, whereas just now I did 3 over 9 squared divided by 10. So this value of power is clearly going to be less than the power for this one. So I'm not going to bother doing that one. That one will be the same. I'm not going to bother with that one. Um, this one, 6 over 9 squared divided by 15, um, or 6 over 9 V squared divided by 15, um, that gives us 4 over 135 V squared. I'm mostly working in fractions um, because it's. I think it's easier to see. Um, but your answers, remember, in physics always need to be decimals. Um, and then this one's clearly going to be less because we're dividing the same number by 20 rather than 15. So I'm not going to bother doing this one either. So it's between two, sorry, it's between, yeah, 280, 2 over 81 V squared or 4 over 135 V squared. And actually this is where maybe working in decimals rather than fractions um, might be a good thing. Um, 
this value 4 over 135 V squared is larger than this value. So this resistor is going to dissipate the most power. So this resistor dissipates the most power. So this is the one that we're interested in. So what we want to do is we want to make 4 over 135 V squared. We want to set that as equal to 2 watts. Yeah, so that's the power that this is dissipating. We want to make sure that's 2 watts. So I'm going to say 2 equals 4 over 135 V squared. And then we can solve for V squared. And we end up finding that V is then... 8.2, I'm pretty sure this is right, I'm doing this from memory because I didn't write the actual answer down, it's a bit daft. Um, I think it's 2.1 and then something else that would cause it to round to 2.2, two. but it actually says the minimum voltage, so we're going to go with 2.1, and the units are volts, it's capital V for volts, oops. Um, so anyway, that's the answer, hopefully you're able to follow that video, if you want me to try one of the other methods, then I'll get my head around that and send you a different video.